Hello and welcome to yet another YouTube video here on this channel. In today's video we are diving into an application called Cortex. And if you're new to the channel, I do reviews around productivity applications, tech in general, and I talk a little bit about mental health as well, but I mainly actually talk about note-taking applications. I would say that if there is a uh, one like major theme in my channel, it is note taking applications and I have tested a bunch of them. And in this video, I'm going to do a first impression. So this won't actually be a review. This is a first impression of the app called Cortex. I will come back after I've played around with it, like really played with the application and understood every feature. I will do an updated uh, review, but this is like a first impression. So you can see uh, generally how the application works. Uh, as of me filming this video, it is still in early access. Uh, they sent out 10,000 new invites this morning. Uh, I'm reading from their email right now and we are just quickly going to go over a few things here. So they have updated uh, their roadmap priorities just to quickly go over that. A mobile capture app, uh, it is planned and it is important and it is really important for every note-taking application to have um, some sort of mobile application and I've seen uh, this sort of uh, mobile capture app in uh, in early stages of uh, development of a note-taking app become more and more popular. Improved import pipeline, so some import of large workspaces weren't coming out right, so they've been working on better import pipeline for apps like Notion, Obsidian, Logsec and others. My issue with this is that I use my mind and my mind only exports in CSV. So if I were to uh, move things, I would probably do it manually. But this is really good if you're actually looking to uh, change applications. You can connect sources and authors. So you will be able to connect documents and captures to specific sources. If you want to take notes on a book, for example, you can uh, simply connect that note to the source. Um, they are also planning to add dates and a minimalist ca calendar, add dates to documents and captures for task management, content planning and other use cases like daily notes inside captures, voice transcription is coming. Uh, so uh, some AI will also be added, select ideas from the capture feature, use documents in your workspace as context and turn them into fleshed out notes, outlines, writing. For example, you take scattered notes in capture and AI makes it look pretty for you. So uh, a lot of cool things coming in the roadmap, but uh, one thing that is important and um, it is for tech in general, but I feel like it is even uh, more important for like pure software applications uh, is that you have to uh, choose an application based on what it is right now, not based on a future promise, because in many cases they won't be able to fulfill that future promise. So keep that in mind. Now let's go over the application. So um. We have like the casual uh, left sidebar here. I like uh, how the application looks like in general. I like the minimalist feel of this, but we have a left sidebar and it looks like I can add new documents from here uh, and I can also filter documents, um, but I can also add a document here and I can open this uh, like this as well. So I can have like I could, for example, have my notes over here and do my writing over here, which is uh, a neat feature, but it is also a feature many uh, applications do have now. Um, we have something called connections. Let's actually do a backslash here quite quickly just to see what it offers. Uh, so you can add basic headings uh, document. So I can actually link to another document. So I'm guessing this is a backlink and you can actually do that with double square brackets. So basic backlinking abilities, which is something I do like, but we don't have a graph view, which is another thing I like if I were to have uh, backlinks, I would love to have uh, a graph view as well. 
we have uh, images uh, we have to do. Let's actually try an image. Let me just upload uh, my YouTube thumbnail and see how this performs. It actually does quite well. I can open this uh, in, I can make it bigger and I can make it smaller. So that's the choices I have. And I can also scroll to zoom and I can just have it like this. Let's see if I now jump out and back in again. I can actually crop it like this, which is really, really cool. So it performs quite well with images. Uh, that is something I do really like. Um, uh, so uh, that is uh, great. Let's do backslash one more time. Uh, and uh, you can insert a table. You can insert a table of context and you can insert a highlight, a code block, block quote. So I'm wondering what reference a highlight uh, and this is highlight a block of text as a quote. So that's the difference between those two. But you have a lot of formatting options. Now let's take a look at elements. And I'm not really sure what this is. Uh, let's do default elements. Let's do a hook. So this should be the hook of uh, whatever I'm writing. Let's actually try another one just to see how this works. So I'm not sure how this works yet. Uh, let's do summary. So I'm guessing these are collapsible and they are. I can drag things around. Uh, it looks interesting, but I will need to check uh, a little deeper on what elements actually are. Uh, one thing I've found is that this application has a lot of um, a lot of great uh, like uh, uh, great capture abilities, which is something I do like. So uh, here I have. A thing I've captured, I can either edit this, I can uh, copy it, or I can delete it. Let me just go ahead and delete a few of the ones that came with the application. Um, but basically what this works is that the uh, ideas are connected to different documents, or they can be connected to different documents. So let's say I'm sitting here in my uh, Notion, uh, notion video idea uh, and let's say that I wanted to write about databases in Notion I could do that uh, and this should allow me to capture it into a document which is really cool uh, or I could actually give it a tag so let's tag this with uh, let's actually tag this with uh, resources uh, sources like this, press enter and it should show up here. Let me just move myself out of the frame so you can see this properly. Um, so uh, it shows up right here and I can actually go ahead and I can click it and that opens up the search uh, with the tag. So it allows me to search using uh, the tag. So I can put the tag first and then I can search within the tag. Let me just open search here and see if I can do the same thing here. You know what this application feels like? It really feels like something uh, like lazy. That is probably the closest one, both in the UI UX uh, of the application, but also the whole like philosophy behind it. Uh, so uh, I can search by tag, I can search post ideas. And here I get a bunch of stuff. Let me just head back to the Welcome to Cortex. Uh, so the core features are documents, capture, tags, and connections, and elements. Uh, and elements help you organize, search, and templatize your documents. So that's how uh, this works. Um, uh, but um, in general, I feel like the application looks really, really good. One of the things I like the most is this capture right here but let's say if i just were in in here and uh, not inside of any document and i captured uh, an idea for a blog post like this uh, and then i can do hashtag post idea enter and now it actually isn't in any um 
in any documents, uh, but that isn't the, no the notion one isn't either. So let's give this notion video idea, press enter. Uh, so this is a little weird. Uh, let's try again at notion video idea. It is actually captured in notion video idea. Uh, this was a little uh, hard. Let's try one more time. Uh, add notion video idea like this, enter. And now it is, it should be captured in notion video idea. So when I jump in here, they show up. Um, a little uh, struggled a little bit with that one, but uh, it actually makes sense. Uh, it is just, I was just struggling with it, but uh, the idea there makes sense. It is easy to use, or at least it feels easy to use. One thing I would like though, if whenever I like jump into my library and let's close this one more time uh, and open it back up, I would like this to be removed. So. I would like it not to capture anywhere after I've actually captured the thing. I would like that to disappear, but that is like a minor thing. Uh, it has something called sources, so you can sync it with Readwise, or you can create a source, and you can create a source, either a book, a website, or other. Let's try a book. So I can actually search the book I'm right now. I'm reading uh, Mountain is You. I think that's what it called it is called and it actually appears here you get the author you get book type year published this is really fun you can upload uh, a pdf you can attach a url let's add this and then i could add my highlights but can i do that manually i can but this seems a little hard so if you were to manually like move your highlights from kindle for example into here it seems like you have to actually do it one by one but on the other hand if you actually connect your readwise account to this uh, it would actually work great let's try a website as well uh, enter information manually so i'm guessing the same thing here uh, what is the other option so you can upload an image and you can just write things yourself. So this is a really cool feature and uh, it seems like you can have it in sort of a table view, uh, a Kanban or gallery view. So uh, like the Notion database views, that's basically what you can have here. I think just in general, uh, this first impression, uh, I think the application looks really clean. There are some minor like, uh, minor things that I'm worried about, one of them being um, being the organization, but it, it looks like they are heavily relying on search uh, to work properly, but it really feels like a competitor to something like uh, Lazy, that is probably uh, the application uh, that looks most uh, like this one. What I like about uh, the Cortex application is first of all uh, that uh, they have a free plan but second and the free plan is really good but secondly that they started with the web version so it is ac uh, accessible uh, both on a Mac but also on uh, Windows which I'm using right now. But that was the first impression. I will do an updated video in the next couple of days so if you have any questions uh, any Anything you want me to cover about this application comment down below and I will try to get to it as soon as I can. Thank you so so much for watching today's video.